This is a review for iShowU Studio. You start off with an overlay up the top where you can select full screen and a few other resolutions or clear. It says about shortcuts such as see the clear selection. Press option to select window under mouse. Here is the main dialog where you can select a microphone that you want to use. You can tick to record application audio or not. This will require another a little uh, driver to be installed, but it is free. Then you select the camera, such as your FaceTime camera, if you've got one built into your iMac or your uh, MacBook Pro. You can select the scale, such as 100%, like all the screen or your selection, or you can scale it down to a smaller resolution. And you can select the timer to time down before you start. Once you hit record, it'll appear up here with a little button where you can stop it and pause the recording. As you can see here is I show you studios recording countdown. Let's stop it. Now we are presented with an editor, so we can actually edit our recording. Basically, it's like a video editor. You have your timeline down the bottom, and you can trim the selection using the bars at the left and the right. This here is a P. It means toggle mouse visibility. So if, say, our mouse is visible here, in the recording, we can turn it off here and you won't be able to see it by unselecting that symbol there. Then we have over on the right of it, toggle mouse animations. Then we have toggle key press animations. Here is a clip which can be split into pieces. So let's go here and select slice up the project or individual segments. So we select that, select where we want it. If you've used Final Cut Pro 10, it's a similar sort of idea. And we can either go across and select and split another portion, or we can select our arrow key here. We can cut full vertical sections. We can add a new camera, pan and zoom. We can add existing video or audio media to the project. We can record a narration or voiceover. And we have add a freeze frame, which is something you can also do in Final Cut. You can add a line to highlight something, add an arrow to point out something on the screen, a rectangle, an oval, or add some text such as for a, uh, perhaps an intro title, naming what the product is your filming or whatever. Then we have a play button to preview, a time to show what sort of position you are. So go here, it changed to five seconds. Here we can zoom in and out. Then we have crop properties. toggle between full and partial layouts. So as you can see, if we have it like this, it's hidden by our editing bar. But if we do this, it will shrink it down so you can see the entire window. Then we have export and share button. You can export and upload directly to Vimeo or YouTube or a file on your computer. You can select your resolution here, your title, description, tags, category and make this project uh, movie private or not. This is mostly if you're uploading. And you can make the file compatible with Apple devices or not. Under preferences, we have open new recordings full screen and a few other options here. You can select your preview device, your encoder, H.264, automatic or JPEG and the quality, by default it's at 75% great quality. It tells you your Mac has a built-in hardware H.264 encoder, great. 
you can select your pass for your temporary files, things like that. Then you can check for any updates. I'm using version 1.4. And you can enable login to log the things you do in case you need to contact support. File is very standard, create a new project, create a new recording, start a new recording, add media to the project, add audio to the project, add a new recording to a project or export. Typical sort of things under edit, such as, such as show info, show media, go to the beginning and the end, add a freeze frame, record a new gesture, add gesture segment, add default freeze frame on all and various modes which you can get to down here. Format is nothing really to worry about. Same thing with view. Window, typical window, and help gets to things like the quick start videos, tutorial page, then their website. You can also download their manual, which is available as a PDF or iBooks. So what do I think of iShowU Studio? I think it's actually a very good screen recorder. As well as recording, it also allows a great amount of flexibility in your editing, including adding freeze frames, pan and zooms, and various arrows and things like that to point various things out you may want to highlight. A couple of things I don't like about it too much is the timeline I find a little awkward. You can't really see your waveform for your audio. So say you know that you had a big gap in audio or something like that and you want to cut it out in between to make it what you're saying speed up a bit. It'd be nice to see the waveform. It makes it e editing a little bit easier, I find, anyway. And you can't see your waveform very well. Uh, you can see it a little bit. I don't have any audio in this recording example. But even when you do, you can hardly see it even when you're fully zoomed in. It, it's very awkward to edit your project based on the audio. The other thing I'm not too keen on is to record your system audio, it uses Soundflower. And at least I, and I personally am having trouble with Soundflower on OS 10, 10.10 Yosemite. It do, any program that seems to use Soundflower to record system audio just doesn't seem to work. But it might just be me. So I would like a little bit more control on the timeline, especially when it comes down to viewing and editing audio. And I would also, it would be handy if you could use Apple's audio units so you could apply one of your third party plugins for audio onto the audio. So if you are using something like Nectar Elements or Wave Arts Dialog to enhance your voiceovers and narrations, you can. You can at the moment as far as I can tell. So support for third party audio units on the audio would be handy. Now let's take a look at a couple other th things quickly here. Up here you can select new recording, stop recording, pause recording and get the preferences from there. And when it's recording, this will go up, show your elapsed time. Also, let's change the size of this project. Now, under project info, you have canvas size. Here you can select from a drop down. So let's say we want to enlarge it to 1080p. There we go. Now, if we take this. Now, if we take this video and just stretch it out to fit. What happens is you'll see this highlighted area here is all that will be exported. You won't see the areas here. That's because we stretched it, but there's a crop on. So if we go down here to crop, we can select crop area. Okay. An interesting feature as well is in Final Cut Pro, you can create a basic freeze frame of, so you select a portion of a video that you want to have as a still freeze frame, then hit freeze frame and that will carry on as 
that still image over a certain duration. However, this allows you to do something quite interesting. You can select it, the free stream option, and uh, record back a narration. And when you finish and click OK, the freeze frame will be stretched out automatically to match the length of your narration. So yes, I do recommend this product. I do recommend I show you Studio for recording your screencast, but I recommend you check out a trial first and see if it works fine for you and if it's your sort of thing first. I always recommend that if there's a trial available. So download a trial and see what you think yourself, but I do recommend it. And if you could like and share this video and also do me a huge favor and subscribe as it only takes a few seconds and will help me out a lot. Thanks.